Right now, the entire world is watching Diddy being dethroned. Just last year, he was still one of the most powerful men in the music industry, but fast forward to today, and he's now awaiting his demise. You guys all know the saying, you either die a hero or live long enough to become the villain. This couldn't be more accurate to describe Diddy. Well, besides the fact that he always was the villain, just pretending to be the hero. Diddy's past has come back to haunt him, and now it seems like he might be facing justice for his evil. The only problem with this is, is that Diddy isn't the only one who is guilty in the music industry, as he had a lot of people partying with him who participated in the same activities. People who would do anything to keep Diddy from snitching on them and bringing them down with him. Hey you guys, I hope all is well. Welcome back to The Truth Is, where I drop new videos every other day exposing the truth. In today's episode, we will be talking about why Diddy might not survive this trial. But before we begin, I just wanted to remind you guys to check out the new interview I just did with music industry publicist Jonathan Hay. I just dropped this hour and a half interview with a music industry insider who exposed Drake, Diddy, and Jay-Z. Here's a clip of that interview. My name is Jonathan Hay. Uh, I'm a publicist. At any moment, did you personally feel that they could have had something going on, Jay-Z and Rihanna? Definitely. You can say alleged, okay, allegedly, definitely. Not allegedly. He was interrogated and this is literally what he said. He said that Jay, uh, no, not Jay-Z, he said P. Diddy, Rick Ross, and DJ Khaled, he said they're all gay, and he said that they're all a part of the Bole Masonic organization. What I do know for a fact, not alleged, but DJ Khaled is bisexual, uh, and Jay-Z has also participated in bisexual activities. Would you want to say allegedly for your safety? There's no, I would say allegedly if it was allegedly. DJ Khaled 100% has been involved in, he's bisexual. If you haven't seen that interview, make sure to watch it after this one. There is so much information in that interview you won't want to miss. I will leave the link to the interview in the comment section. Thank you all. Now, let's get right into it. On Monday, September 16th, hip-hop mogul and billionaire Diddy was arrested at a hotel in New York City. That was the very moment many people were waiting for all year. Rumors about Diddy's arrest has been circulating for months, but people began to feel like it wasn't going to happen. Many felt that Diddy was too powerful, which made him untouchable. Well, that was until it actually happened. When Diddy finally got arrested, it broke the internet. As everyone felt, it was long overdue. Diddy had been free terrorizing the music industry for decades. While people were celebrating the fact that Diddy was finally being held accountable, they seemed to have forgotten about Diddy's many silent accomplices. The other people at the top who helped Diddy set up the freak-offs and take advantage of all these rising artists. While everyone has formed an angry mob chasing Diddy with pitchforks and torches, his silent accomplices are making a run for it. They are trying their best to destroy evidence and hide their relationship with Diddy. When Diddy's house was raided, it was reported reported that the feds had confiscated tapes from the free calls showing many other celebrities involvement. It turns out Diddy was secretly filming all his celebrity friends activities at his house, especially when they were invited to the free calls. These tapes 100% incriminate these other celebrities as well who were indulging in these free call activities with Diddy. One man who attended plenty of Diddy parties, Jay-Z, has been moving rather strange all year since the Diddy takedown started. This year, he canceled his Rock Nation annual brunch party without any real explanation. Maybe it's because he doesn't want people realizing he was up to the same activities as Diddy. People are failing to realize Diddy was surrounded by very powerful people the entire time he was doing all of this evil. In fact, in the Little Rod lawsuit, the producer who sued Diddy for a lot of the things he's arrested for now claimed that the most powerful man in music, Lucien Grange, allegedly helped Diddy throw these freak-off parties. Little Rod claimed in his lawsuit that Lucien paid for these lavish parties where Diddy was doing his dirt. Little Rod also alleged that he often saw Lucy and Grange at Diddy's house going into Diddy's bedroom and staying in there for hours. It's important I stress how powerful Lucy and Grange is. He is the top guy in the music industry. The only people above him are the investors who are the real elite. He is the president of Universal Music Group, UMG. UMG owns most of the record labels. They are one of the three major record labels. Now, according to Little Rod, Lucy and Grange allegedly was behind funding some of those parties and knew about the activities going on at them. 
even allegedly participating in some activities with Diddy. Eventually, Lucy and Grange lawyers came after Little Rod's lawyers, forcing them to remove his name from the lawsuit and even issue an apology. This, to me, only made Lucy and Grange look more guilty. Lucy and Grange is a man with immense power and connections. Right now, Diddy could be a liability to him, as who knows what dirt Diddy has on him? Who knows how many videos Diddy has of Lucian potentially doing something compromising? People like Grange have the kind of money and power to make someone like Diddy not make it out of trial. There's a lot of people in the industry that want Diddy gone right now because they don't want to go down with him. They know at any moment Diddy might flip on others and bring down whoever he can. Another two big celebrities with tons of money and power who were often seen with Diddy were Rick Ross and DJ Khaled. The three were close, very close buddies, often seen hanging out at Star Island with Diddy. Ross even bought himself a house on Star Island to be closer to Diddy. Diddy's house on Star Island ended up being raided and it was where some of the freak off tapes were found. You think Ross and Khaled aren't in some of those tapes? Both of them would prefer if Diddy just never made it to trial, as who knows what could come out in those tapes. Just imagine the number of big name celebrities that are on those tapes. It's not just rappers, it's actors too, as Ashton Kutcher was a close friend of Diddy who was at his free golf parties. Diddy party stories, they're our favorite genre of anecdote. Really? One, yeah. Wow, okay, I've got a lot I can't tell. Wow, okay, I've got a lot I can't tell. So, um, <sighs> can't tell that one either. I mean, I'm like actually cycling through them. There was one moment, so I, it's not really a party story. But our relationship was really bizarre. So it started over punked. Cause yeah. he was like, yo, don't punk you me. can't punk me. And I was like, I don't want to tell you. Everybody's on the table. He's not me, I'm off the table. So that started our conversation. We became fast friends and we used to just hang out, watch football together. Like, As you heard for yourself, Ashton pretty much lets us know that what was going on at those Diddy parties couldn't be spoken about. Kutcher has been awfully quiet since Diddy was exposed at the beginning of the year. It's pretty obvious that many of these celebrities are shaking in their boots, wishing that Diddy would just disappear. They know Diddy has the power to sink the boat. This has become a massive problem for Diddy as those who were once his friends are now his enemies. Diddy is no doubt the Jeffrey Epstein of the music industry and it looks like he's going to have the same outcome as Epstein in prison and they are setting this up right now. Recently, it was reported that Diddy was denied bail not once but twice. He offered the courts $50 million to be released on bail but it was denied. He then promised to give up his passports and to not have female guests at his home but it was also denied. It's clear they don't want to let Diddy out which I'm not gonna lie, is rather strange, as Diddy isn't being accused of murder or something like that. He's also promising to give $50 million in collateral, which would have been more than enough for any other celebrity facing similar charges to get off. They don't want to let Diddy out, because that's exactly where they want him to be. While Diddy is free, he's surrounded by security and has endless means to protect himself. But in prison, it's much easier to make someone like Diddy disappear, just like they did with Epstein. This is exactly what the elite are setting up. If you have been watching the news lately, they have been reporting that Diddy is on suicide watch. They are claiming that the feds believe Diddy is at the potential risk of taking himself out behind bars. This is very interesting because Jeffrey Epstein was also on SW before he quote unquote took himself out. The reason they're doing this is to set up the narrative from now. If they do end up taking Diddy out, then they'll just blame it on him doing it to himself, just like Epstein did. When Epstein died, so did a lot of the secrets he was keeping about the richest, most powerful men in the world. Epstein became the sacrificial lamb for other much more powerful people. This is exactly what seems to be happening with Diddy. Everyone who did dirt with him are now hoping he ends up in the dirt. A man like Lucy and Grange or Jay-Z definitely have the pull to make someone disappear while inside. So don't be surprised if this is what ends up happening to Diddy, especially after he pissed off the elite on top of him. About a year ago now, I called out all of this that's happening now to Diddy. When he sued the liquor brand Diageo, he was signed to. Diageo gave Diddy over a billion dollars over their partnership and all they wanted was for Diddy to push poison onto his people. They paid Diddy handsomely to promote Ciroc to the urban community. Diddy promoted Ciroc so much, people thought he owned it but he never did. All he had was a partnership where he made a percentage of each Ciroc flavor he promoted. Diddy and Diageo's relationship was going smoothly until Diddy got too greedy. He didn't just want to make a lot of money promoting the brand. He wanted to become one of the elite he was working for, an owner. So he made his own brand, De Leon, under Diageo. 
Diddy thought that he was going to make it to the next level and be the elite, so Diageo didn't invest in De Leon like Diddy expected, which led to his brand failing. When this happened, Diddy tried to shame Diageo into promoting his brand by suing them, filing a lawsuit claiming Diageo was purposely making him fail by not taking his brand seriously. This is what caused all of his problems as Diageo responded swiftly. Not long after that lawsuit, Keefe D got arrested for Tupac with Keefe claiming Diddy was who paid him to do the crime. Here is a clip of my video stating this almost a whole year ago. You know why? I believe Keefe D has been trying to snitch on Diddy this entire time. For the last decade, Keefe D has pointed fingers, elbows, and even toes in Diddy's direction, repeatedly telling multiple outlets Diddy paid millions of dollars for the hit. For whatever reason, now is that something is happening, but why? Could this have anything to do with Diddy turning on those above him? Recently, in June 2023, Diddy got into a disagreement with the owners of the liquor brand Ciroc, a brand that Diddy has been the face of for as long as I can remember. In June, Diddy sued the owners of Ciroc for racial discrimination after he claimed they treated his liquor brand, De Leon, like an inferior black brand. Since then, the two have had a massive fallout, which has cost Diddy hundreds of millions of dollars. Isn't it strange that now that Diddy is locked in a legal battle with the owners of Ciroc, Keefe D got arrested for a crime that Diddy is being connected to? What a coincidence, ain't it? After all these years, even though Keefe D was straight up snitching on himself and Diddy for the entire time, this just so happens to be the year he gets picked up for it. The same year the elite above Diddy are having trouble keeping him in his place. I don't think it's a coincidence at all. If Diddy does finally get taken in and questioned for this, then you know why. Those above him are getting him out of the way for not falling in line. When I saw Diddy get in trouble with Diageo and things started magically happening to him, I knew they were behind it. This is something even 50 Cent recently admitted during an interview. 50 Cent stated that the owners of Diageo are the type of people that can make civil cases turn into criminal cases. My particular experience with Beef Centauri, it was great in the beginning. It's great for the work for them. It's not so cool when you start owning things. You see what I'm saying? So I made a lot of money with them too. Like, there's a point, they did the mirror Puffy's deal with Diageo was for Syrah. At the end of the day, you want to be able to open up doors. Sometimes you got to take that opportunity and get in. And so that's what I did with Syrah. So he didn't have ownership for that at any point, but he was getting a lot of money, almost like $50 million a year at one point. So you see him go to daily on this when you see him have some issues. It gets bad, you know? And these people have really strong relationships. Don't think that the civil case doesn't turn into a criminal case. The civil case doesn't turn into a criminal case faster because he's making that them uncomfortable. That's a big part of it. You know what I mean? Like, when you go to the spirits business, it's, it's, it's not governed. As you heard for yourself, even 50 Cent agrees with what I said almost a whole year ago. Diddy is being punished not because he's been doing evil for all these years, but because he fell out of line. These people want Diddy in jail because it's easier to make him disappear. With all the people that prefer him out the way right now, don't be surprised if Diddy doesn't make it out of this one. Well, I'm in this one here, but before you guys go, make sure you watch the interview with the publicist I just dropped if you haven't yet. You won't want to miss that interview. You can find the link in the comment section. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.